everybody. Hi. 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 Nice Hi. to see your faces. Welcome, welcome. Look at how cute you all are. Look how many there are. Oh. If, if you'd like, please turn on your camera bottom left so we could wave at you and see who we're waving at. It is so nice to be back at Art Party after a month. It's such a joy to see everybody. Hello, hello. Lots of new faces, which is great. My dad, which is also great. <laughs> hey, Pop Art. Am I a new face? No. <laughs> Mute him now. Mute him now. <laughs> or I'm making you co-host. <laughs> You're on Pop Art Watch. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So happy to be back with you at Art Party Central. We're going to have a fabulous fabulous party tonight um if you if you haven't yet please turn on your camera bottom left if you're comfortable doing so and then let's all pop in the chat where we're from the last party we had people from canada and london and all sorts of amazing places and new york <laughs> look at that lowell mass Yep, North Carolina. Cool. Hello, North Carolina. Hello, North Carolina. From Vermont. From Hunger? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> we got Vermont. Hello. Um, let's start it. We have a long party today with the eight presenters, um, which goes super fast. You won't believe how fast it feels. No, it goes. I'm going to get started in about one minute. California blue by hi Here we go more people coming in and we can give it about another 10 seconds we've got wow. somebody from Trinidad and Tobago yes, I Yay! Thank you for being in the house <laughs> We're all coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> things, you know, things keep going. We could all end up in, you know, these wonderful places. <laughs> yep. Hi, Westport, Connecticut. All right. So while we're waiting for just a few stragglers to come in, I just want to say that if we have any major technical difficulties and we need to shut down the party abruptly, we're going to post an updated link in red at the top of our homepage at artpartycentral.org. So if anything happens to your the Zoom, go to artpartycentral.org and you'll find a link and we can pick up again seamlessly. Finally, for the last couple of stragglers, if you'd like to turn on your camera, that's bottom left. And we do love to see your faces. And if you haven't yet popped in the chat where you're from, but right now, what we're going to do is we're going to have a toast to all of us being together. Happy, happy summer. Happy Art Party Central. Happy creativity. Cheers. 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 <laughs> welcome, welcome. We're going to mute everybody now. Please don't be offended. It is just our Zoom protocol and party protocol. And, uh, unmute. Woohoo! Okay, unmuted. I am Carla Gideon, and I am so honored to be your host tonight and one of the founding members of Art Party Central. I make original art and goods and gifts for the home, happy, joyous, beautiful pieces that are hand-colored etchings that you can find me at carlagoodian.com. And I'm so fortunate today to have an amazing co-host, uh, Charlie Tesnakis of Ecologic, and he's going to be making sure everything runs smoothly today. If you need anything, please post a question to Charlie as admin in the chat there and check out Ecologic's website at ecologic.com. Today, we are fortunate enough to be joined by eight extraordinary artists. We have Kathleen Tesnakis from Ecologic. We have Janine Krantz from Janine Krantz Artisan Jewelry. Renee Chase, a first time exhibitor from Cloth to Clay. Can't wait for you to see her work. Kat Clara Applewhite Mitchell from Clara Applewhite Designs. 
Megan Patrice Riley from Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry, Mimi Kirshner, Barbara Poole from B Felt, and Nora Swan from Swan and Stone Millinery. And now's my chance to also tell you that Kathleen, MPR, and Nora are also founding members of Art Party Central. So you're in for a full treat tonight because you're getting a lot of founders. Let me tell you how this party is gonna go down. Each of the artists is gonna give a presentation. If time allows, I'm going to ask the artists a couple of questions. You can be posing additional questions in the chat. We're happy to take your questions. And then at the end of the party, we're gonna raffle off one $50 gift certificate for each of the artists' websites. So that's eight chances to win, but you do have to be present to win, so stick around. We're also at that time gonna give you a special discount code, which is gonna be good for all of the artists' websites as well as my website, carlagoodian.com, and my co-host website, ecologic.com. At the end of the party, we're gonna open up for chatting and try and remember any of the questions we saw in the chat that we might not have gotten to and invite you to stay and mingle with us. So let's get to the good stuff, our presentations. Today, our first artist is Kathleen. Kathleen, take it away. Hi, welcome everybody. It is so wonderful to be here back at Art Party. I hope you've had an amazing summer. Um, I'm actually getting really excited that fall is around the corner because of course, fall is my favorite season where I get to make my heart out and keep you all warm with my recycled cashmere. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about today, like what pieces I was gonna be wearing as, you know, we're gonna get some of those really crisp days. I won't be ready to get rid of my summer items, but I do want to have like one of my cashmere scarves in my bag just in case that temperature is going down. Uh, this little double cashmere does so many wonderful things. You can wear it in just an abundance of different ways and styles, depending on what you like. You can even just like throw it down and leave it right there or just tie it on your bag for when you need that extra bit of warmth. Um, the other item that I'm thinking about for, you know, those crisp fall walks that are coming up are these little cuffs. These are some of my um, lighter weight pieces, all in recycled cashmere, of course. And for those of you that don't know me, um, I specialize in recycling cashmere. Uh, one of the beautiful things about the work I create here in our Troy, New York studio is that all all of the pieces are made out of old cashmere sweaters, which are harvested in sort of my sister city of New York City. So none of our products that we make have traveled more than 150 miles and they're made without any dyes or chemicals. So they are truly um, as green as it gets. So uh, that of course is my passion. But today I know, you know, I, I work a lot with color. And so I wanted to talk about colors for the season and what we should be thinking about. And I also want to encourage everybody to really stretch when they blend colors. So I brought a rack in here today. Um, just to show you some things, I've talked on Art Party about how special and unique uh, my skirts are, and you're going to see some very unusual colors. Uh, they are very limited, but I wanted to show you like what to put them with. And like this uh, skirt, which has a lot of raspberries, looks amazing with this sort of cobalt because of the raspberry at the top. You might not instinctually put it together, but it's absolutely dynamic. I know a lot of people really want to match everything, but one thing that I've learned with using an abundance of color over the years is the brain is more excited when it sees something a little bit different. So don't try to be so focused on match and just put sister colors together. Here's another example of that. Here's the ruby red with the magentas. So when you're on uh, my website, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by all of the incredible color that you see there. And just know that if you're attracted to something, most likely you're gonna find something wonderful to match with it. If you ever want a guiding hand, I do Zooms directly from the studio. So uh, we can do this together. So um, never hesitate to use our chat. My little chat on the website actually comes to me. Um, so I will do my best to set you up. 
as far as colors for the season, you know, we haven't had brown in sort of fashion colors in a while, but brown and earth tones and sages are really coming for this season. So get your browns out. And if you don't have any, it might be time to find some wonderful uh, browns and sages. Um, I brought a few examples of some of those colors that I have on the website. And then I thought that I would, you know, do my usual strip tease. I'm just kidding. I'm going to try on one of these sweaters for you so you can see a sweater uh, on a real body. And uh, this is one of the sage colors that I was uh, speaking of. And of course, I have green eyes. I always encourage you to go with your lip color or your eye color once you put something on that sort of matches. That way things just start to sparkle. You can probably see that just by getting um, close as I get close up. But anyway, this is the V-neck sweater. I love the V-neck sweater because it's just such a classic. It has beautiful lines. Um, it's just a lot of fun to wear. And especially not all of my customers want like pop colors. So it's also uh, more subdued. I just do it in more subdued colors. Um, Carla, have you got questions for me? Uh, yes, um, I'm noticing behind you some hats. Oh yeah. What I'd like to know is how do you handle your hat sizing? <laughs> Yes, well, that's one thing about recycling is everything's a little bit random. Uh, I always say I make the hats one way and at the machine, they come out just the way they like, like people. <laughs> so um, we do all hat sizes. So let's say you're on our website, you may see um, the term average or medium used in hats. And basically a medium in a hat is average. That's what the majority of pieces will be. If you see large or small, the, there's a chart there that will tell you that a large is anything above uh, 23 and a small is anything below 21 and a half. So it's all there for you. If you can't find that, just call me up, send me a chat, I'll take care of it. And if you fall in love with a medium or average size and you know you're small, give me a heads up. I will actually adjust it before it leaves the studio. Thanks so much. And Kathleen, is there a way that if somebody doesn't want to do this online, is there a way to see you in person these days? Yes. You know, I'm doing some really fun in-person events. Uh, if you are up in Troy, New York, and by the way, there's a really great um, HBO called The Gilded Age coming out in January that's been filmed here. So you might want to make your way here. But I do our farmer's market every other Saturday, and I'll have that on our website for you. And then I've been doing a lot of local shows since we haven't been able to travel that much anymore. So there's always a schedule. I welcome you to the studio come visit me, but definitely you can find me in person. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kathleen. Thanks for an amazing and inspiring presentation. Thanks for these warmers. And, <laughs> and we're going to move right on to Janine. Janine, can't wait to hear you. Okay, I'm unmuted. Wait, no, I'm not. Hi, everyone. I'm Janine Krantz, and I am a art jeweler. Um, I make jewelry from sterling silver and sometimes 22 karat gold, but mostly sterling silver and gemstones that I source from gem shows. I actually was just at a gem show and I got some really fabulous new stones. So I just want to share them because I'm super excited about them. I don't know if everyone can see them, but these are all going to be in my latest work or my next work. Um, so Basically, with my inspiration, I start with the stones and I like to sketch. So I'll take a stone and I'll just start sketching and riffing around them. And for instance, this necklace here that I'm wearing, I did this sketch, if you can see, and then that's the, there we go. That's the pendant that I wound up making from my sketch. Also, this is an ocean jasper. Oh, that's backwards. If you can see, there's my sketch and there is the pendant that I wound up making. So I do a lot of sketching to create my pieces, but I don't always necessarily make the thing that I sketched. So sometimes things just kind of take on a life of their own. So for instance, these necklaces I just made recently, 
like last week, kind of have a lotus flower motif. And I like to do granulation and open work in the negative spaces. There we go, there's the lights better. Um, and fill the negative space with a very non-traditional granulation because I don't do anything traditionally. I am self-taught, so I kind of wing it. I'm wearing one of those necklaces now. I also have this necklace here, which is my arch necklace, which is a little more traditional because it's got standard stacking of granulation, but it looks really good layered with lots of necklaces. So like I have a three layered thing going on here today and I love this look and I love this necklace. It's perfect with so many things. So if you were looking for an excellent necklace for layering, this is a really great one to go with. And then I also make a lot of earrings and I like people having choices. So these earrings are a rectangular hoop with a granulation. Let me see if I can get everybody up here. And it comes in three sizes. So it's kind of like uh, the three little bears. So if you like very long, you can get these. This is medium and these are small. The long ones are long. They're not quite shoulder dusters, but they are pretty, they're pretty long. I also have these earrings. These are also made to order. I love these, I wear them all the time. They just stand out against, especially if you have dark hair, they stand out beautifully. These are available on my website, made to order. Same with all of these hoops I just showed. I also just finished a series of what I call hybrid cuffs. And these cuffs, or they're not really a full cuff because it's only kind of goes around halfway on your wrist. And then the rest of it finishes with a chain. So if you're, let me see if you can see that. If you're the type that finds bracelets to be uncomfortable, and I am certainly one of those, it's a cuff in the front, but it's flexible chain on the back. So if you're typing, if you're writing, if you're just doing basic daily activities, it doesn't get in the way and it's not uncomfortable. I also just finished a bunch of rings. Let's see if you can see it. Got some glare here. This is a pretty big statement ring. It's a Sonoran Dendritic Rhyolite Jasper. There we go. And it's got a heavily patterned band. It's got a little surprise on the underside with those little balls there. And it's a really great statement ring. And I have a number of them. As you can see, I have another one here that I'm wearing. I have this big old turquoise one here that I'm in love with. I also have some more extravagant statement pieces that I do. This one, you can see, is a pirateized ammonite. So it's millions and millions of year, years old. It's actually an ammonite fossil that's been pirateized. So it's got that gold, that fool's gold to it. And then underneath it is a pyrite in schist or slate. So if you look, you can see the actual formation of the stone there or the pyrite where it's actually like cubes. And I added my granulation. There we go, you can see it better. And I almost have it so that it's here and then it's spilling out and feeding down along the side of the pendants. This one is pretty, pretty dramatic and special. I also do a lot of these. These are wide band, let's see, there we go. You can see that. These are wide band rings with tourmaline. This one has a green tourmaline, here we go. There's a lot of glare tonight with my lights. Um, but these are really fantastic and people love them and I can resize if need be. So I get a lot of people who will love this ring, but it's just not their size. And a lot of the times I can resize them. So if you see something on my website, please ask because sometimes I can resize. You know, to me, not every jeweler will do that with a ring. And I love hearing that you do that. And also the intricacies of your work and every single detail. There's so much going on. I'm all about ask, little details. I'm going to ask the question a lot of people want to know. Um, what have you personally decided about seeing you in person? Are you, are you? Right you now, this year, 
I've decided I'm not going to do any shows. I kind of decided at the beginning of the year that I wasn't going to do any shows this year just because everything was so uncertain. Um, I'm hoping next year because I really miss being in shows and seeing people and just getting a one-on-one -on -one interaction with customers and meeting artists. Um, shows are just so much fun. And I really like that personal connection that you just don't get so much online. I try to, you know, I chat with people, but it's not the same. You know, but your work really holds up on camera. Like we can see it and we can see all those details. I can't wait, you know, because now that we all know each other, I can't, <laughs> can't wait to meet you in person. But oh, yes, me too. This is absolutely the next best thing. Thank you so Thank much, you. Janine. Um, we are going to bring it on to our brand new exhibitor that I am so, so excited for everyone to meet today. And welcome, Renee. Take it away. Thank you so much much it's so great to be here and be with everybody and uh, i really appreciate the opportunity i um make ceramic fashion figures i was a fashion designer all my life and eventually wound up taking a pottery class just for fun and um it led me into this other world because i was so attuned to the to the figure, a female form, and attuned to clothes and dresses that it just was a natural progression for me to move into doing ceramic fashion figures. And, and they're just fun if you're a, a fashionista or somebody who really loves clothes to have these in your home, wh wherever they are. I have a couple of clients who have white pieces they put in their all white bathroom and sometimes in the bedroom, sometimes uh, just in the living room or dining room. But I use three different methods of firing. And um, the first is electric firing, which you see in this piece and in the red piece. And uh, this one was fired electrically. I have to check out her shoe, it's too cute. And um, these are just really sleek, shiny, metallic figures that, that really bounce light. And they're just so much fun to have around. My second type of firing is Raku, which so many people know about, and it's, it's just, such a thrilling process because the pieces go into a kiln and you take them out at very high temperatures and plunge them into the cold air from the intense heat and a lot of times they break there's a lot of loss in that process but um, in the end they come up come out in these fabulously wonderful colors and mixes of colors that you really can't uh, anticipate ahead of time. And um, this, this one here too is another Raku piece and it, um, it smoked in between. So I gouged out areas in between to create tiles and only glazed the areas of the tiles. And then all the black in between is the smoke as it hit the piece um, inside the kiln. And the last process that I'm most crazy about is called sagger firing. And in this process, um, I actually create a vessel that the piece goes into before I put the whole thing into the kiln. So you can see this is a sagger piece as well. And you never really know how it's going to turn out. So this one was wrapped in copper wire in myriad ways. Um, and then the wire melted on the service surface. And the vessel itself was painted with a salt solution and an iron oxide solution. So when I went back to the kiln in the morning, this process is different from Raku because Raku, you pull right out of the kiln and the color happens immediately inside um, inside another vessel. With Sagar, you don't know till the next day what happened. So it's sort of like Christmas morning. You go back to the, um, back to the site of the kiln outside and open it and you never know. And then things like this happen. This is 
one of my favorite pieces that I've done in a long time, just because of the way the the copper wire melted onto the surface and this funny there there there's a little squiggly thing right there and you can almost see the the um copper scrubby that i had put down in the bottom of that vessel which left an impression on the piece so um i've made these in sizes from 17 inches as the smallest all the way to life size. And it's really such a fun experience. Renee, so, um, for some questions, there are a couple of there, there are a couple of questions coming up in the chat. I'm hoping you can hear me. Um, you're frozen. There you go. Um, do you still do clothing design? Um not not for profit, just for fun when I have time, but not that much. No, I did it for 35 years and um, I really had my fill. I really felt satisfied by the experience. So now I only do clothing design when there's an occasion in the family when I when I really wanted to do, make something special for a wedding. And, or and how, how heavy and delicate are they? Yeah. Well, they, they weigh, I'd say under three pounds. If you drop them, they'll break, they're ceramic. So, um, so these little pieces that you see here are shipped in boxes that are 18 inch cubes, boxes within boxes. They're enormous, but it's the only way to keep them safe. So they're all wrapped in bubble. And, and then when I ship, I also do um, replicas of bridal dresses. And uh, those are even more monstrous to ship. Can but you tell I'll us a little more? more? Yeah, show us and tell us a little more about that. Yeah, so um, when a bride is ready to get married, it, this is how it usually works. Her mother, mother-in-law, the groom sometimes, or the bridesmaids get together and um, send me photographs from the fittings of the dress. And then I make the piece in time for the wedding. So there's a big reveal there and the bride cries and, and everybody is so emotional because Usually you wear a wedding dress, you put it in your closet after it's preserved and it stays there for however long the marriage lasts. And um, this way, the, the young brides appreciate having this around them all the time because it's a reminder of, of that wonderful day. And it's so a beautiful reminder. Pieces. Pardon me? I said, it's a gorgeous reminder. It's a work of art. As I, as the mother of somebody getting married next year, it's like the gears are turning. It's incredible. Um, and I also wanted to ask you, what's the most satisfying part of your work? Um, I love just going to the clay and making whatever happens in my hands. I've kind of learned to trust rather than plan. So, um, that's, it's wonderful. That's a wonderful process for me. It's fearless. And I, I always used to be so concerned about, oh, I'm going to, what's the next thing going to be? But, um, I have full faith now that if I cut out a form and I think about what the form will be, that I can finish it and add details and make it be, um, something that I enjoy, but the most wonderful experience that I have is with the brides. Um, when they open their pieces, they send me videos of, of when they're opening the box. And I've had some amazing stories from husbands and mothers and three generations of women who have worn the same wedding dress. So it, it, it just gives me goosebumps just to even say the words of, you know, three generations of women wearing the same dress. And they presented the replica to the grandmother, the first wearer. 
and um, oh, thank you. Be part of it. So yeah, it's a wonderful thing. You're getting me a little flicklamp. Thank you yes. so much. Yes. That, that's wonderful, Renee. Thank, thank you. you for an awe-inspiring presentation. Thank you so much. And it, it's just the best party. We're going to keep moving to another <laughs> extraordinary artist who I love hearing and I love seeing makes me joyful is Clara. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. My name is Clara Applewhite Mitchell, and I am Clara Applewhite Designs. From my voice, you can hear that I have an accent. I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago in the West Indies, and I have, I'm a teacher, printmaker, textile designer, and now a silk painter. I went to Howard University and then transferred over to Fashion Institute of Technology where I learned this Guta Serti process. Now the Guta is a resist process, very like batik, but with batik you use wax. With, with the Guta Serti, it's almost like a glue, this color, and I squeeze it through this stylus and I create, I draw the design on the silk, which is stretched onto a frame. And the white lines that you see, this creates, this is what is the guta. After I painted it and washed out the guta, the white lines remain. And that is the technique itself. Now I practice the original guta serti technique, as well as what they call the watercolor technique where I literally, you're painting just like watercolor, wet on wet. So once I stretch the silk scarf onto the frame, I paint the dye and then sprinkle the silk salt in whatever design I wish. And the salt basically creates a chemical reaction, which creates that movement that you see. The salt pulls the paint into itself and creates that movement and texture. So that's a watercolor technique. And this piece is pan syncopation. This whole collection here is basically because of the pandemic. I'm missing home, Trinidad a lot. So everything about Trinidad, the food, the water, the, the animals, the flowers, the festivals is all demonstrated in these pieces. This one here, shows you a bit of direct painting where I have an under swirling design of color, which I painted directly onto, then went back in, drew the design with the guta. So, and this one here is a pagua, which is a festival at the, at the beginning of spring. It heralds spring, love, colors and it's also called some people around the world holy you may know it as that so my swirling design there has to do with all the swirling dancing that you do spraying the color on everybody because everybody literally comes out looking like this <laughs> all this color you know you wear white and you spray each other with the powder and the dyes and this is what you come out in <laughs> want me to leave and there, this is a more sedate, direct painting, straight onto the fabric, no guta lines or anything. So most of the scarves are 14 by 70. I also do shirts, silk shirts. This one has to do with Diwali, the festival of light. So the men get involved as well through the shirts, but I, you know, wear them like a little jacket over a little tank top, easy. The men, of course, must be involved. So apart from the shirts, I also do silk ties and more of the women. <laughs> caftans, midi caftans for the evening. This one is not from the home collection, but I am doing one which is called Toot Bagai. It has quite a few of the motifs from the different themes that I've done. Toot Bagai means everything, all, everything. 
in Trinidad and Tobago, we are mixed culture. We have Hindu, Muslim, white, Spanish, Chinese, and we're all considered ourselves as Trinis. So we're like a Kalalu of people, a melting pot. So we have all these different things and all the different designs that I have here. Are there any questions? Carla, you're muted. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> And I was going to say, yes, we have questions. And I really just feel like we went on this voyage with you. We went on a whole vacation, which is terrific. So the, so the process, the gutacerity, can that be done on any other fibers or just the silk? Sadly, no. The gutacerity is specific to silk as the batik process is specific to cotton and linen. And now... Once we get something of yours and we want it, keep it forever because it's incredibly special and beautiful, how do we take care of it and how do we clean it? Easily you wash it in cold water and you iron it while it's still damp. That's, That's it. it. Simple, no dry cleaning? Please, no, 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 no. We're trying to stay away from the dry cleaning chemicals. The chemicals themselves, especially on hand painted, anything degrades the, the vibrant color. So you really don't want to be lazy. Sorry, ladies, but little hand washing, it really doesn't take the silk. You know, it, you can wear it anytime, any season, but simple little wash, and it does not have to be, you know, dishwashing liquid is fine. You know, I'm going to say it's actually not lazy. I think it's actually the easier way to go. You don't have to put it in the card. You don't have to remember where you put your dry cleaning ticket. You're not polluting the planet. It just seems like a much better, but better way to go. There's a question in the chat for somebody who likes things more sedate and toned down. Do you have any scarves that have a more muted palette or something you would suggest for somebody, maybe something with more blues and cool tones than some yeah. of the brights? I have any number of cool tones, but because it's summer and I'm a really tropical, sun-loving child, you're seeing all the brights. I remember I'm a textile designer, so I can work with you. I have blues. I have a lot of muted uh, color combinations similar to this. Which, yeah, that one is, that's more toned down. Yeah. Although I have to say for me too, I'm drawn to your bright colors. And I think you're <laughs> making a statement that you're optimistic, you're joyful, you're bold, you're a happy person when you put something of yours on. Thank you so much for sharing with us today, Clara. That was amazing. And we're going to move on to Clara before we let you go. We're moving on to Megan. So just do a little like this, because I know you're modeling your NPR today. Look, there we go. And then I will do the same. And then we'll hand it over to Megan, who's going to tell us about these great pieces Clara and I are wearing. All right. Awesome. Welcome, Megan. Hi, I want to say Kathleen is also wearing beautiful earrings. I just saw her model as well. And that was the cutest thing. Awesome. I see you. Well, thank you so much. Carla, thank you guys so much for having me. Clara, also, I'm like in love with the caftans. I keep thinking of outfits I can wear. I think. It just beautifully yes. displays your print work. Welcome everybody and hi, I'm NPR from Megan Patrice Riley. I'm typically a Brooklyn, New York contemporary jewelry artist, but I am not in Brooklyn. As you can tell, I'm in sunny California where I grew up in my parents' home. So we're in Studio 2, um, Studio B. So just welcome and thanks for being here. I brought some really fun, special one of a kind pieces, some experiments, some new designs, some new gemstones. So I'm excited to show you uh, a little bit what, what's been happening in the studio. So I make contemporary art jewelry, which is I think a little bit ambiguous, but what I, how I interpret it and what I think about it is, is I take non-traditional materials and blend them with more traditional metalsmithing techniques. So I'm using a lot of gold, silversmithing, uh, gemstones, but then blending it with more non-traditional materials like the steel cable it's little steel braided cables that are almost like a really fine thread, but they, what's cool is that they're metal and they have a strength and core of steel and flexibility 
that allows me to draw in space. I can take my drawings and make them into 3D forms into kind of almost like a, a flat line drawing on my clothing, like these pieces I'm wearing. This is one, one of my new ones that we will talk about and do more like 3D forms, like my rings that I'm wearing. Love having big rings that are super comfortable and lightweight. These are with that steel cable in a yellow gold finish. This is 24 karat yellow gold over the steel, excuse me. <coughs> 24 karat yellow gold over the steel cable and then clear coated in nylon. So it feels almost like a monofilament. It's what they use to construct suspension bridges. And those, you know, when you drive by on a bridge, it's like those huge cables that are all twisted. And they, that's what it's done and scaled down to this miniature form. And then I get it done with these more, with the fineness. So adding gunmetal over the cable, 24 karat yellow gold, and then bringing in freshwater pearls. This is one of the new ones I was talking about. This is a new color palette I've been playing with for autumn. It's gonna be freshwater pearls, but in these kind of more coppery brown. Brown was like a theme, this, this, seat, this party. Browns, creams, uh, cock yes, totally cocktail rings. And they have like a little fidget spinner type. You can really play with them. So that's, I think, very attractive to me because I love things I can play with. But this has the white cream pearls, but doing these more muted like coppers and bronzes, I'm mimicking metal tones within the colors of the freshwater pearl. And I'm loving this because I feel like this gives it a nice two-tone feel that you can then wear with lo lots of different types of you know, coppery warm tones, dark magentas, burgundies, thinking about our palette navies, yes. And then this, some new earrings. I love engineering. If you can't tell, it's, I talk about it a lot and I love math, but I use these a lot in how I design. This is like little cantilevers or little balancing pieces that mo move and are all individually secured onto here on these 24 karat or 15, 14 karat gold fill ear hooks that I make on little tubes. So everything moves in this really beautiful and controlled manner. It has a little wave that, so when you move it, it has a controlled movement. It's not gonna like hit you in the face, but it'll move nicely with your face and feet flattering. This is, I did talk about some new pieces. So this is a one of a kind piece I was playing with I like asymmetry and I'm really trying to push that. This is all little, you can see when you get up really close, all the different colors of cable I blended in here, yellow golds and gun metals. And I made like a little topographical map that will then totally be crushable. You can flip it open, comes back to shape. And what I like is that because we're all so different here, we all have different curves. This is able to adapt to different bodies based on how I've kind of engineered this. So it, it'll curve with you and be something that everybody can wear. It'll be a little bit different on every person. I, I love that. It really gets me going. I'm, oh, oh, brought, oh, it's right here. So new gemstones. I like taking a lot of my classic pieces and re-envisioning them. This is some new lapis. I like playing with color too. Maybe in a, I mean, sometimes not so subtle, we'll get to that, but sometimes in a more subtle way. So this is with steel cable silver, which is Argentium silver in here. It's related to sterling, but it has more recycled um, silver in it and it's anti-tarnish. It's a little bit less copper. So it gives it just a little bit easier for care. But I like the little sparkles that dance in there and then are, are balanced with the faceted rondels of um, lapis lazuli. So you're getting this wonderful water feeling. This color really, I think about color a lot and it, it really, I think what Kathleen was saying earlier about finding the thing that suits you and flatters you is a big deal. Yeah, uh, I'm, I am yeah. loving the lapis because I, I know that would look incredible. Um, do you have like any special tips or styling tips other than that as we move into fall, other than find what really works for you and run with that? I keep thinking about as we go into fall, like thinking about how our wardrobe is going to change. Are we, we're still going to be wearing masks probably in, in terms, some types of capacity. So bringing in, you know, cool mask. Shape. This is the piece that was just featured on Vogue. So I, this is a quartz crystal with sterling silver tubes. 
and this converts into a mass chain. So I think this is a great, some, some pieces that are really convertible as our life is becoming a little bit, we have to be quite flexible with our, with our options and how we're doing that. And I think that applies to how we're dressing as well. This becomes a mass chain like this. You can wear it as a necklace, you can have the ring in the front, having things that you can wear multiple ways, I think is going to be a good theme for this fall. That's great. And we only, we have like less than 30 seconds, but show us a scrunchie. I got to show you a scrunchie. This was like a total label of love. I wear lots of scrunchies and they always end up my wrist. I'm like, why not make an actual bracelet that looks like a scrunchie? It's hand crocheted little chain with a little powder puff and you wear it like a little bracelet. It's just fun. Super fun. It's so much fun. And can you wear it as a scrunchie too? Yeah, it totally works. It's crazy. I love stuff like this. Yes, please. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh my God. I love that. I, I am I'm gonna be your scrunchy queen model. <laughs> oh, I have one for you. Don't worry. Uh, pom pom and all. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, NPR. That thank is you. really exciting to me. And now we move on to the woman whose entire collection I want to take to my house. Mimi, take it away. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Mimi Kirchner here, and I'm here with all my friends and my imaginary friends and my imaginary worlds. And my kitty, who I'm afraid is going to come into the picture. Um, I've been working on tiny worlds this last few weeks, and I wanted to show you some details. These are little um, pin cushions in a teacup, and um, each one of these is a each one of these flowers is a pin, and you can move it. And I, um, you can do a little uh, pretending uh, land landscape design <laughs> and um, each piece has um, a lot of hand embroidery there you can see and um, they're completely functional teacup I mean um, pin cushions in a teacup but people have used them for other things I mean obviously they're just suitable as a decoration but they're also I've had uh, people buy them. Um, I had somebody buy one to celebrate fin finishing paying off their house. And I had somebody else who bought one uh, to propose to his girlfriend. And that was really cool, actually. <laughs> so the, um, all the cups are thrifted or gifted. I, um, which is, so they come from friends and thrift stores. This is a little, these are my little um, fantasy vacation spots. Uh, a nice, um, a nice lighthouse there. Before that, I was working on a lot of the fellows, which you could see in the back here, my tattooed men. And um, they come in all different skin tones. I buy, um, commercial fabrics and I over dye them to different skin tones, including fantasy skin tones, such as this uh, green man here, which is based on English mythology. And um, this, I don't know if you can, sheesh, the lighting is pretty bad here. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see the it's hand. Actually, yeah, it's actually, you can see it nicely, Mimi. Yeah, the hand embroidery, it's all hand embroidered. The, um, the fabrics that I look for are not at all meant to be tattoos. When in the store, I, I use this very classic home deck fabric. It was, um, somebody once joked, it's your what you'd see on your grandma's sofa. And I mean, I do have to admit that my mother actually did have toil on her sofa, <laughs> so that's pretty accurate. So any, so um, yeah, I try to have a good range of characters. I um, have my little animals here and the animals are um, made from new and recycled fabrics that they have very fancy clothes that all come off. He has a beautiful Angora sweater and, um, and a, fancy argyle vest. He has a bow tie 
and a messenger bag for his with all his daily needs, which include some a little notebook and uh, a handkerchief and a little bit of money and anything else you want to put in there actually. <laughs> and um, yeah, so there and he has friends and here's a little lady friend and I, I'm very, I'm, I enjoy the little visual joke. So he's, she's got little squirrels on her dress. And um, also she's got her little purse and another cashmere sweater. I make the mini versions of Kathleen's um, <laughs> sweaters. <laughs> I do a whole <laughs> line, I do a whole line of these, um, what I call pillow dolls. And they are um, suitable for sitting on your sofa, your bed, a chair, or hanging up on a wall. And they are wool and it's uh, wool applique. And um, they are, I like to think of them as, it's sort of a canvas. So I do my artwork on the nice big area. So I have the ladies, and then I have the babies. So here's a similar, this is all reclaimed wool that um, sweaters and mostly sweaters actually, uh, that I cut, felt and cut up and applique on and little um, cashmere hat and a felt embroidered face. Mimi, it seems to me like you were just born to do this. How did you get started with all this? So I was, um, I've been making my whole life. I started out as a teenager, as a jeweler, and then went to art school, went on to be a potter for 20 years, and and then uh, time to shift gears. <laughs> I, started, I started working with my mother-in-law to dress an antique doll, and I fell, I like to think of it as I fell down the well. I got so um, interested in the world of just antique dolls and vintage dolls and um, started experimenting with these different things. I'd been saving things, collecting things my whole life and all the fabrics and I just it just was the perfect match for me. I've always been very interested in children's book illustration and um, and also figurative artwork and the, it just all came together really. <laughs> Your work actually does remind me of my favorite children's book illustrators, like Mark yeah. Burns and, you know, even going back to Sendak. And I think you, the way you get personality in your dolls is so evocative of that. It's perfect. Um, I want to talk to them. Do you give them names? I, I don't give them names. I let people give them their own names because um, I'll tell you a story. Actually, I bought a doll from another artist one time who had written a, a whole um, story about her doll and I was I read it and I was like I, I don't think I would like this person <laughs> so I feel it's kind of important for people to have their imagination sparked and come up with their own stories and when we have time for one more quick question which is in the chat but I'm going to personally add to it somebody asked if you do custom animal dolls and my question is your little worlds in a teacup, do you take someone, someone, can someone give you a special teacup and will you do I, that? Yes, I do. Um, I do have made several in special teacups. That's something I have done. And what and, about the custom animal dolls? Well, it depends. I mean, um, it has to be something that I don't, I wouldn't have I wouldn't be able to like make a whole new pattern or anything like that but for instance I had somebody ask me to do a fox that had a um special backpack on because they were a backpack designer so so that's the kind of thing that I can do or if you want a certain color or uh, but if someone said I want uh, a German Shepherd dog doll I probably could not do that got it yeah. Thank you, Mimi, so much. Again, I thank you for letting me in your world. I really do feel like I've entered a 
different planetary experience when I see you work. <laughs> well, this thank you. Um, and we're going to move on to one of my favorite people and work that does APC, Barbara. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight and joining joining all of us. And thank you for, you know, thank you to Carla and thank you to uh, Charlie for, you know, hosting and co-hosting. You guys, are, you guys rock. You really do. Um, I'm Barbara Poole, the, uh, the B of B felt. I make handmade felted garments and accessories. And people always ask me, what is felt? Because people always think of felt as that stuff that you played with when you were in school. And yes, that is felt. Because the definition of felt is non-woven fiber. But I make felt that's made from wool, which is the traditional method of making felt. And I begin with raw fibers, or I should say unspun. And I'm going to bring it really close so you can see how fine it is. Each one of these little fibers will entangle and become one of my wonderful garments. And today I want to talk about transitioning, which a lot of people have been talking about, about fall, because we're going to be coming into fall. And as we head into fall, we want to start adding layers. And one of the things that I've um, been working on is my new, I call these, I, well, I've named them shackets because that, that's what L calls them. It's a jacket that's as light as a shirt. So you can wear it as a shirt or you can wear it as a jacket. And they're very, 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 very light. The base fabric of this wool is uh, being woven for me and a number of other artists in, um, in India. And, but it begins its story in Australia. And in Australia, a friend of ours uh, runs a sheep farm, a merino wool sheep farm, where she ethically raises sheep. And her husband, who's Indian, and they ship, they take all the wool that they raise, they bring it to India, in Jaipur, where they have established a workshop for women who are indigent, who have lost their means of support and they give them back their dignity. They give them jobs and they create beautiful product for the world to use. And every time I sell one of these, I am selling, um, I'm, it's women helping women. And it makes me, it really makes my heart <laughs> sing to be able to do that. This is uh, pink and orange. I had the privilege of actually going to India about four years ago and discovered that pink and orange is their version of black. It's everywhere. The <laughs> Jaipur is a pink city. And this is, you can't really see it. I can't, read, but it's very, very short. It's what they call tropical weight wool. Now I wear a size 12. So you can see this is a little bigger on me. So this is probably fit about size 14. And somebody before asked about sleeves length. This one, I did a three quarter sleeves, but I'm going forward. I, I think I'm going to do all full sleeves. I'm going to try to show you as many as I can because they're all brand new. This pattern here is, I just think it's just a lot of fun. And this, once again, is a little bigger on me. So it's, it's like a size 14, 16. And here the sleeves are longer. They come to, they come to this to your cuff. Uh, so that you'd be able, it wouldn't catch on your bracelets or your pocket or your uh, watch. And see the beautiful patterning on the back of it. Now all the patterning I'm creating, the base wool is all hand dyed. And then the other wool is, so it's I'm wool being felted into wool, which is a technique called new no felting. In this case, I'm felting into wool. These are the grays, which I think are so luscious. And when I'm mixing, when I'm mixing my patterns and colors, I try to, I try to um, be very aware of using both warm and cool. I'm a painter by training. Uh, I have a background in painting from museum school in Boston. You can see. So you can see that if you look really close, you can see it's both a cool, cool gray and a warm gray. So that it, it it go it mixes really well. So you wouldn't have to say, oh, I have to have the exact gray to go with it. No, this is, has multiple grays. It will go with a number of them. Or black. <laughs> My joke is that someday I'm going to write a book and it's going to be, does this go with black? Because believe it or not, at every show, that's my number one question. <laughs> and here, once again, are the luscious browns. I, I understand that they are coming back, and I am really happy about it. Uh, the earth tones are just, I mean, they look beautiful on anybody. They really do. The colors. This, once again, it's all hand dyed. And these will be all on my website tomorrow morning. I just shot the pictures. And they're called my shackets. And then the other thing I want to talk about, I want to show you, I want to talk about is my holies. <laughs> my holy scarves. You can see there's a few of them on the back wall back here in other colors. I make them usually two-tone. The only one I do solid is the black one with multicolors. 
as you can see, they have a lot of holes in them. And this is also made out of that fabric. And if I bring it closer, actually, you can see, you can see my arm right through it. See how sheer that is? Yeah, Incredibly sheer. Yeah. Very, very lightweight. This is tropical weight wool. I want to show you a couple of ways to wear this. First of all, you can wear it like I make them wide enough and long enough so you can wear it as a shawl wrapped around your shoulders. But you don't want need a pin. You don't need a button. You don't need a snap. Just pull it through. Ta-da, you're dressed. <laughs> Let's say you're wearing one of those gorgeous statement necklaces. You didn't want to hide it, but you need to cover your shoulders. Bring the hole all the way to the bottom. And now it's like a little cape. Ta-da. That's Again. fantastic and so transformative. I kind of want to see a video of you doing all the different ways to wear the I holy, video. Fact, the holy just, scarf, but I was going to say with Justin Bieber's song, Holy, playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Into the ultra like a track star. That'd, that'd be fun. I wouldn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah. Make a reel. <laughs> I love that. Where can people see you in person if they want to see your work? So I've just been informed. I'm direct, I am directly challenged. My next show, I am doing outdoor shows. I am, um, I am starting to do shows. I just did a big show in New Hampshire. It went wonderful. And my next show is going to be in uh, Lyndhurst, which I believe is Tarrytown, New York, not Lyndhurst, New Jersey. So I won't get lost. And then after that, I'm going to Madison, Wisconsin. So I am traveling around. So you can see my work uh, live that way. And there is on my website. I list all the shows I'm going to be doing. And you can also contact me. And I'm still happy to do Zoom. It's so much. I, I've missed you all, guys. <laughs> this is so much fun. I love it. And when we do a Zoom, are we only looking at what you already have made? Or do you do custom orders as well? Oh, I do custom orders. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can customize most most anything. There's some things that are one of a kind that I cannot actually customize. You know, like something like one of these jackets where I've used sari fabric that this fabric is gone. I don't have any more of it. I could make you something similar, but I can't make this jacket ever again. <laughs> Barbara, thank you so much for an amazing presentation. I love your work and I love hearing you talk about it and it, it's just delicious. Uh, and we're gonna pass it on to, I cannot believe our last presenter of the party, um, but not least another Art Party Central co-founder, Nora. It's all yours. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. It's great to be here after a, a, quite a long time of uh, resting and relaxing and um, recharging. Uh, so I hope you guys had a great summer. And um, I am Nora Swan, and I'm half of a hat making team up here in Vermont. Um, my partner, Samantha Stone, is here watching, I think, or she was. Um, we make hats up here in Vermont. Sam is a self-taught felter and she makes lots of wonderful textures and colors and amazing felts. And then I make hats out of them and I'm trained at FIT and um, we just make hats. We enjoy it very much. We love the way hats transform uh, your personality or at least bring out different facets of your personality. When you change your hat, you're showing something different about you. Some of them will make you seem very like uh, competent and professional. And others will make you seem sort of romantic. And uh, yet others will make you seem sort of like, I don't know, rockabilly. And I'm still wearing my straw hats and my summer hats. So I'm going to sort of mix the two together as I show you, and I'll try and put hats on and talk at the same time, which is not that easy. One of the things I'm working on right now is a transitional uh, style, and that is made of um, denim. And people have been asking for a bucket hat for years, and I finally found in my archives an, a pattern I made years ago and had forgotten about, and here they are. So we've got denim bucket hats. They're not on the website, but they can be, or you can just contact us if you're interested. And uh, let's see, here's another one. This shape is one of my all time favorites. It's called the beside the point because it's sort of got this interesting diagonal shape here. And I carve 
the forms for many of our hats. So that's uh, our shapes are unique to us because I actually taught myself how to carve wood and gave myself um, neurological damage in one arm doing it, but it was very fun and I still do it every once in a while. It's, it wasn't serious and it went away. Here's another style. I like to play around a lot with the, um, the brim shapes in particular, not just the crown, but the brim. So a lot of them you'll notice they sort of have different points, two points or one point or different um, sizes. And that kind of comes from um, when we first started out, we only had a few blocks and they were mostly the crown, which is this part. And so I was freehand blocking the brims. And so I don't know why they just sort of came out all different shapes. And then when I started carving, I tried to make shapes that resembled the ones that I had been doing by hand freeform. And the other thing about hats is they really um, make you travel in time in a way. If you put on a hat, sometimes you'll be sort of Victorian and then you put on another one and you're in the seventies and it's kind of amazing how it just swoops you around and tells a story about you in a way. I had one um, customer that came into one of our shops and she suddenly went on this whole long story about who she was, like she was standing on a railroad platform and it was foggy and this man was coming toward her and she was changing hats and telling this story at the same time. It was amazing. I wish I had it recorded. It was really incredible. And let's see, here's a brown one. This one is kind of wild. It's got uh, driftwood that I collected on the side of a uh, lake up here. And then this very interesting sort of teardrop shape. And that's sort of a cocktail hat. It's deliberately miniaturized. And we do men's hats. Got a couple of men's hats. It was very dapper. And people have been coming up a lot. People are really coming to Vermont. I don't know if it's, we've got this great reputation, which is true, that we've been very good about keeping COVID numbers down. And so people are coming up because they feel safe up here. And so we've had people road tripping up here in groups. It's been really fun. And then the other thing we've been doing a lot I've noticed is people are really um, in transition in their personal lives as well as for a new season. And so um, they're getting ready to go out into the world again. We've had a couple of authors be interested in hats because they're gonna be going on book tours and um, mother daughters have come in and it's been really amazing to see and to see what people are um, looking for in hats. So speaking, so speaking of that, Nora, like since all these people are now are traveling to you, they're purchasing hats, they're getting on the road again. Um, would you recommend something specific as a traveling hat, as a packable hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a couple of different um, directions we go with packable hats. The, the denim hats are going to be packable as well. We've got these canvas hats. And we've got a whole bunch of different styles. These are great because the canvas itself is very tightly woven and it is sun protective, very sun protective and also very good in the rain. And this style in particular has a mask built in, should you need it. And you can just pull this up and tighten it. And it also keeps it on you if you're on the beach or something and the wind is blowing. So we've got that style in either this shape of several shapes. This one is a fedora shape and we do do the, ma the mask with it or not. This one has veggies on it because I'm a gardener. And then we've got this crazy one, which is another one people have been really loving up here this time. It's humongous. Oh, I pulled it too tight inside. They've got a drawstring inside um, and somebody with a very small head was trying it on. But anyway, you can see how it looks. I am this loving one. the humongous hat. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The bigger, the better. The bigger, the swan and stone. Right. <laughs> it's great. Thank 
for like a fancy event that gets rained out. Like you'll be the only person at the wedding that doesn't uh, have to run. <laughs> I love that. Nora, thank you so much for an amazing presentation. Sure. And I want to thank all eight artists for sharing their stories, their lives, and their creativity with us today. It was my honor to be your host, and I am inspired and awed by all of you. And in turn, I want to thank all our Art Party Central attendees for coming and joining us today. Um, I know personally you are what inspire us. You are what, um, I said it earlier, floats our boat. You make us happy and feel privileged every day to be able to make our work in the first place. And we love having this platform to connect and let's continue this connection as much as possible. Follow us on social media, subscribe to our email letters, ask us questions, send us notes. Guaranteed you will meet with a warm, happy reception that we want to hear from you. And of course, continue coming to Art Party, continue to tell your friends about art parties and joining us here as we enter fall and party season. So with that, I am going to move on to our raffle winners for today. Um, Charlie was kind enough to pick all our raffle winners, but because we have a husband-wife presenter situation with Reverb, I am going to uh, read the raffle winners in lieu of Charlie so that you don't hear um, speaker feedback at the same time. So with that, let's go. And um, oh, and I will say two things. Unmute because I do not like to woo-woo alone and we need to woo-woo for our winners. Um, so that's first. And second, if you are a winner, please put your email into the chat so that we can be sure to find you to email you your gift certificate for your win. And without further ado, winner number one for Ecologic, we have da -dun -da -dun, Laurel Otley. Congratulations, Laurel. <laughs> Oh, congratulations. Oh, an apology for all the names I am going to butcher. And I assure you, I will butcher just about every single name. Number two, the winner for Janine Krantz. We have Anne Marie Gigliotti. Anne Marie. <laughs> Number three, Cloth Caclay. Our winner is Tara Corsi. Congratulations, Tara. <laughs> Number four. Clara, Clara Applewhite Designs, we have Christine Unra. Christine. Yay, Christine. Number five, NPR, Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry. We have Marsha Dill. Marsha. <laughs> Yay. And for number six, Mimi Kirshner, we have Liza Page. Congratulations, Ooh. Liza. Woo hey, Liza. I saw our hands going up. Somebody's very happy. Um, <laughs> and number seven for Barbara Poole, we felt we have Tina Jackson. Tina, Ooh. congrats. And last but not least, we have Swan and Stone Millinery. We have Toby Greenfield. Toby, hey. congratulations. Hey, Toby. Congratulations to all our winners. And because everyone is a winner, as our parents told us when we were younger, uh, we are all going home with a 10% off coupon for all eight artisans' websites, as well as my website, carlagoodian.com, as well as the Ecologic co host website, which is also a presenter. So double there, ecologic.com. And this coupon is good today through August 26th. So head over to our websites and do yourself some retail therapy shopping. Treat yourselves. Well, we get 10% off. And the code, the code for that today is Art Party 819, A-R-T-P-A-R-T-Y 819. And we're going to send you a follow-up email that'll have that in the email as well, as well as direct links to everybody's website to make it easy for you to go there. Fall is coming, and as I said, that's art party season. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram and keep an eye out from emails with from us with our schedule announcing our fall winter party schedule. We're excited to be getting that out to you soon. 
I want to give my co-host a Thanks big round of applause. And a thank you. Thank you, Charlie. You made my day. Oh, you're very welcome. And Charlie, uh -huh. thank you for okay. being an amazing co-host. You made sure everything ran smoothly. You kept me comfortable and at ease. And for that, I thank you. You can find him at ecologic.com. So once again, thank you all for coming. For those of you that with busy schedules or are tired after a long day, we understand if you have to leave at this point, we are going to stay on a little longer for an after party and for any of you to ask any questions that might not have been asked during the um, during the party. So Heading feel, off to make dinner. Feel free to stay unmuted um, and ask questions. And you need to. Okay, thank you. And with that, I I think I did notice a question that I missed. Somebody wanted to see the bucket hat again. Can we start with that and then we'll move on to your questions? Sure, here's the bucket hat. Um, I don't know if you can see, it's gonna have, I haven't put the drawstring in, but it'll have a drawstring which will allow it to be adjustable in size. And um, I'm playing around with um, how, how many different colors I'm going to do. I've got a couple of different, we've got remnants, uh, denim, remnant, denim remnants. And so this one, it's two sides of the same denim. And so I've sort of just playing around with that idea of how to mix and match the shape. That's got to look so great with fall jeans. Thanks so much, Nora. And I'm going to be quiet for a second. So if anybody has a question, they can just actually, now would be a time to shout it out or put it in the chat. But chat it out is just fine. More fun. Carla, that's a very, very beautiful in that hat. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Any questions? It sounded like somebody was going to ask somebody <laughs> something. You look beautiful in that hat. Somebody said I look beautiful in the hat, and I could hear that even through the reverb. Thank you. <laughs> A compliment I can always catch somehow. <laughs> I have a question for Renee from Cloth to Clay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, can we do a Zoom with you to look at um, the pieces with you and then possibly some pieces that may not be on your website, like the red dress that you have on there? I think you're muted, Renee. You're muted. Renee, you're muted. Nobody can hear you. Renee, you have to unmute. Oh, she can't figure it out. <laughs> Red, we can't unmute her. There we go. Nope. What happened? She's frozen. No, it's not frozen, but she's not mute. She's not unmuted. Let's see. Nope, she's still muted. I wonder what's going on. Huh. Well, I tell you what, Renee, if you can, you can't answer me, but I have emailed you. <laughs> okay. So how about if you answer my email and let me know, this is June. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see what yes. it says. It says, yes, June. Yes, you can Zoom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's like almost like a party drinking game where somebody puts their post it on their head and you have to guess what it says. I love your things. I absolutely love them. You, I'm just enthralled with them. So I definitely want to connect with you. Yeah. And we all know June has good taste. So <laughs> that's unquestionable. <laughs> oh, this is the after party of after parties. Any other questions? <laughs> all right. And oh, then it let me do it. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If I it froze and it wouldn't let me unmute. So I'm grateful for uh, <laughs> for being able to say yes. Happy Zoom. I'll answer your email. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Liza. So because there have been no shows for this past year, does anybody have any 
interesting ways to reach new customers? We think art party is the best way. Yes, yes, customers. yes. That's why we I'm really here. actually actually we 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 really think this is a way that feels. I mean, to me, I feel like I know some people much better than I knew them even from actual shows. Some of the other artists whose booths I might not have stopped to talk to, and a lot of my customers, I feel we've taken a customer artist relationship up a notch to a, um, you know, to a friendship through art party. It's been a wonderful outlet. Um, and then definitely, you know, more consistent as I have not been this summer with email blast communication and things like that. Anybody else want to speak to that? I, I know, I mean, just for me personally, since I'm unable to travel, I've actually been doing a lot of local events. And I have to say my local community has overwhelmed me with appreciation because I was usually on the road. And uh, it's been such a gift to have that local connection and be able to do something at home and still uh, be able to put my work into the world and, you know, pay, pay our bills. It's, it's been a real gift. And I would have never gotten there if it wasn't for the pandemic. So between Art Party and that, those are some of the things I've been trying. I agree. Yeah. And those of you, this is this is what happens when you want to borrow your crafter's child. This is Swan and Stone. This is this is Sam Stone's daughter, and <laughs> she came all the way from Vermont by herself by train, and we're having four days together. <laughs> so that's something the pandemic offers. <laughs> I would like to say that to the people who have not been on art parties very much and are not used to this kind of environment for shopping, I have worked with several of the artists on this uh, art party and they are all magnificent to work with, um, to do Zooms with, and they do incredible work and custom work for whatever you want. So I really encourage people to not be shy about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The hat June has on is actually called the June, that style. <laughs> it's <laughs> lovely. In consultation with her, yes. Does it look gorgeous? Yes. It really is. It's beautiful with your hair, especially. <laughs> I have hair envy with you, June, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, then, if nobody else is going to come in with a question, we're going to thank everyone for being here and say we'll see you at the next art party. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm here. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know why there's an echo. Ask her if she has ear pods in or some kind of ear pods that are. There's two. Her. Dory, you have two devices connected. You need to disconnect oh, okay. one device to be able to Sorry. speak. Sorry. Never mind. I want Playing to you know. put it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for a second and see if there's something in the chat. Wow. Ooh. Okay, the next time that happens, we all have to dance in rhythm to the. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yeah. Everybody get home safe. If you're not at home, stay home and Netflix and chill if you are. <laughs> get wet. Shop on all our websites. <laughs> yeah, <even better. laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank, you. Thank you for coming, Liz.